Hello guys, today we are going to talk about the flexure stresses in beam and this is really important topic about the flexure stresses and in this lecture we will talk about how to find the flexure stresses at any point uh, in a beam. So first of all uh, we should know about uh, the flexure stresses uh, as the flexure stresses uh, are denoted by a formula I should write it here the sigma x is equal to the uh, moment divided by the moment of inertia uh, and multiply to the y distance and we will talk in detail now but this is the formula to find the flexure stresses at, in beam at any point so is this the beam given uh, as we see here uh, the, uh, the known dimension r of the uh, 10 kips load acting on the beam simply supported beam uh, and 5 foot distance from the left side and 5 Put this in from the right side in the 10 kips load at the center point. Uh, and we are interested to find the um, flex stresses uh, at a distance of uh, 2.5 from the left support. 2.5 foot from the left support. We are interested to find the flex stresses at this point, right? Or uh, to find the flex stresses, so we need the uh, we need uh, the moment uh, moment uh, moment. Uh, uh, at this point, 2.5 foot from the left support, right? And the moment of inertia of this section as well as the, uh, the this distance. Uh, we will talk about the y distance, what is y, right? So uh, I suppose that this section of the beam uh, is given as as the dimension is uh, 6 inches and 2. Let's take an example of 10 inches, right? 10 inches and height and or 4 inches width of the cross section of the beam, right? So this is the cross section of the beam. Now, to find the uh, flex stresses, first we have to find out the moment at this point where we find, we, we, are, we are interested to find the moment. Uh, uh, we will find to find the uh, flex stresses, so we will first find the moment at this point, right? So to find the moment, uh, we we will first have to find the shear forces at this point, right? So I'm going uh, to find the shear forces, right? This is the shear force reference line diagram. As we know that the 10 kips load acting at the uh, midpoint of the beam, so definitely there are two supports, so without solving by equation, we know that the 5 kips load will be transferred at this support, 5 kips, and 5 kips load will be transferred to this support. As there is no horizontal load in there, uh, so no need to find the uh, axial resistance, uh, and it will, and it, the the whole load will be distributed only in two supports. Uh, and is it is it acted middle point? So the support will be only two, and the five kips and five kips will be the resistance offered to this load. So now the shear force diagram uh, is easy to draw, as we know that the five kips load acting it here. So we will make an op make an arrow upward and this there is no load acting so again 10 kips acting downward so 5 kips is this and 5 kips coming downward and this is going going and 5 kips again upward right so this is the shear force diagram this is the shear force diagram for this beam right and from the shear force diagram we will find how to uh, find the moment diagram right so to find the moment, we will, this is the shear force diagram, and to find the moment, to find the moment diagram, I will place again a reference line for the moment diagram, the zero, zero, zero. Is the five kips load is acting here, and there's a five foot distance, is also five foot distance, and, and there's a, so how to find the moment, right? So is this uh, rectangle, as we see here, we can find the area of this rectangle and this will be the moment diagram at this point. We are interested to find the moment diagram at the midpoint, right? So, the midpoint. So we will just find its uh, area of rectangle and, and we know that the 5 kip is the vertical um, and dimension and 5 foot is the uh, horizontal. So we multiply the 5 into 5, 25. So 25 kip foot is the, will be the moment of this rectangle, of this beam you can say the midpoint, 25 kip foot. 
Similarly, it also in the negative way, so it will come in zero at the support. And it's all the roll support, there is zero resistance. So this was this is the moment diagram for this problem, right? And we can also find the moment by multi five multiplying by the distance five. So the midpoint, the moment will be twenty-five kip. The maximum moment will act at the midpoint. So now is we given an example, uh, we given a problem that to find the stresses at this point, two point five kip from the two point five foot from the lift support. So we should find the moment at this two point five because uh, as in uh, flexor stresses, we very interested to find the moment. Where in moment, uh, we have to find the moment at this point where we we are going to find the stresses, right? So. Uh, two point five. So the moment at two point five foot will be at the five five foot five keeps act, uh, load acting in here, and the moment and this we multiply this distance up to two point five. So five multiplied by two point five, we will get the moment at this point, right? It will. So at this point, the moment will be, the moment will be five cross two point five is the moment term equal to twelve point five keep foot is the moment acting at this point two point five, right? Um, so now coming to the flexor stresses equation again, that the sigma x is equal to the mz moment and iz into y, right? So the as we find the moment, a moment we find the moment equal to the 12.5 cap foot. Uh, we will multiply it by 12. So we change into the uh, inches. Uh, it will come 150 cap inches, right? So this is the moment uh, mz now iz very interesting to find the iz right so iz for this rectangular section is we know that the moment of inertia of this rectangular section is bh cube divided by 12 so b is 4 uh, h uh, h is known to us 10 inches 10 cube divided by 12 now it comes out to be wait calculating it comes out to be 3, 3, 3.33 inch cube, right? So this is an inch cube. This is why I convert the moment also into cube inches. And we should have same same unit. And we are only an unknown with this y, right? Y is unknown to us. So in this case, it's a uh, rectangular section. So this uh, the, the maximum distance from the centroid will be this will act y, and similarly this will be act also as y. And y is equal to in this case five inches right uh, so so the uh, putting this uh, all these putting all this value in this equation putting all this value in this equation sigma x will be uh, 150 cross 5 divided by the moment of inertia moment of inertia was 333.33 so sigma x comes out to be uh, it comes out to be 1.60 ksi. It's in kip per square inch. The stresses, the flexor stress is coming at the top of the member, right? At this point. This is now the flexor stress because I put the maximum value, this y, equal to the 5 inches. I put the maximum value 5, so this is what the, now the flexor stress is acting at 5 distance from the uh, centroid of the uh, cross section and it will act in this uh, point, 2.5 foot from the left support of the beam. This flexor stress is um, uh, having a uh, value of 1.6 ksi will uh, now act. And similarly at the bottom it will also act uh, 1.5 ksi, the flexor stresses will also act 1.5 ksi at the bottom but at the location of 2.5, right? So I'm drawing here the fracture diagram, like this, the cross section of the beam was 10 inches, right? Was the cross section of the beam. So, so if, uh, we find out to 1.60, we'll be acting here, cooperation stresses, similarly, 1.60 ksi here act at the bottom, the maximum stress act at the bottom here, and the top here it will act 1.60 ksi. These are the flexor stresses acting at the top, this will at the bottom, right? 
So if the distance was the same from the centroid, that's why the same stress is one point is same stress is in magnitude one point six zero and one point six zero acting uh, at the top and bottom. Uh, so this was all about how to find the flexure stresses in a beam. Uh, it's very easy to find out, uh, but you should know about the formula and you should know behind the concept that uh, what's the moment and what's the moment of inertia and what is this y value represent. So this was all about flexure stresses and beam. Mm, uh, so if you have any question, uh, please uh, comment down. We will get into it soon. And uh, please subscribe our channel for more videos as uh, we are uploading daily videos related to civil engineering. Uh, thank you for watching.